Hello and welcome to another one of our videos. This is our BMW 440i M Sport Coupe, finished in Alpine white. And this car has covered 25,230 miles with full dealer service history. Car was registered on the 26th of the 6th, 2017. I think the car's been pre-registered because the keeper um, changed on the 19th of the 7th, 2017, which is literally about three weeks later. So I think it's just uh, been a pre-registered, maybe a demonstrator at the garage uh, or a car that they've purchased and then sold pretty quickly. Okay, so back to the car. The car's got lots of nice spec on it, which we're gonna go around and show you. The whole car has been detailed and machine polished to a very high standard. A lot of time and effort is put in to um, finishing the cars in the condition that they're in. So one person specializes in the exterior, machine polishing each panel up to a really high glossy finish. If you look at the reflection, white cars are such a nuisance to, to video. You can never get the reflection in the same way as it looks to the naked eye. I'll just move around, but it's gleaming in the showroom. Maybe it's because everything around the showroom is white as well and there's not enough contrast. But uh, anyway, all the bodywork's machine polished and then we have an another gentleman that specializes on the interior of the cars. So each has their own part of the car that they specialize in, make really nice uh, and we get great results. So we fitted some black gloss M Performance kidney grills. These are genuine BMW ones not the eBay double slatted ones that you quite often see. These are the actual genuine ones that we've bought. We have front and rear parking sensors, front fog lights. Now if I come in close, there are literally a couple of pinprick stone chips that you will not see. We've touched them in, but I mean, they're like dots. Literally like pin dots. There's, there's nothing else, no big chips or anything like that on the front of this car. It's literally, you, you get these tiny little specks. I'm, I'm sure you know what I'm on about, but there is nothing nasty on there at all. If we come up onto the bonnet, if there's anything bigger than like a, or about a millimeter, I'll point it out, there's just one or two, there. Two together and then a tinier one, smaller one behind. So there's those two there. And if there are any more, no, there is not. So there's a couple of little chips there and the rest, I'm just scanning the rest of the bonnet, the rest of it is all clear. And for that matter, if we come up onto the glass, just look how clear that glass is as well. It's obviously done very low mileage, but the windscreen isn't peppered. We've got the camera up there for the high beam assist, which automatically dips the headlights for you. We come up onto the roof, you see we've got electric sunroof. So that's a, a nice bit of spec that you don't quite often see on these coupes. All of the roof is in really nice condition. We've got a little bit of dust that's fallen down from the roof above. That's all it is. There's no bird dropping stains on the roof or anything. All of the trim around the windows is all lovely. We come back onto the boot lid there's no marks i'm just going to come around so it's just there's no marks on there there's no scratches i know it's a bit difficult to see with the camera but i'm looking uh, outside of the view lens uh, so i can see okay so while we're here let's just show you the wheels so we've got the 704m 19 inch alloys with the M Sport brakes. Incidentally, all of the tires, Bridgestone run flats, all of about six mil of tread. Got a very mild bit of surface rust on the discs. It's just where the car's been washed over and then sat outside till we brought it in. You'd be surprised how much the, uh, oh sorry, how quickly you get those stains on the discs. It's almost immediately it all just comes off as soon as you start driving the car again. If I'm going to come round to the front, 
because it's a really nice looking car. Now inside this car, we have the individual Opal Merino leather, which is really nice as well. So I'm gonna show you the last two wheels. All nice there. Like I say, lots of tread on these tires. And there's the rear wheel. Come back out. Show you the side view of the car. Really nice. Very fresh <laughs> was the word that Dan used with the color combination. Just showing you around the filler cap. No scratches. We open this up and uh, get it in focus if we can. There we go. And also, if you have a look on here, the E10 ethanol, that's what I was just looking for. The car can run on this later fuel, ethanol max E10. So that's all okay. Something that's been a concern for some people. Oops, we've lost focus. There we go. All of the wing mirrors, all in lovely condition. We've got the black gloss air vents. If we come down side view, it's actually quite hard to see on a white car, but there are no ding dents of any sort on the car. There were two little round ding dents that we had taken out by the dent man. So I know there's no more because two of us went around the car to make sure there weren't any others. So the car is dent free. And I say that because not all of the dealers take their dents out. Saw that on uh, another gentleman's car the other day. He purchased somewhere. And basically the car was just covered in dents and uh, some quite poor paintwork as well, incidentally. A bit of a shame, but... Okay, so on the door handles, let's see if we can get these to work. Yeah, so there's the LED handles as well. I mentioned the sun protection glass. Right, let's take a look inside. So we're gonna start off, we've got the Harman Kardon sound system so 16 speakers there's one there one there there's some under the seats as well got another speaker up in front of the professional media now we've got the black gloss trim with the pearl chrome finisher so black gloss door handle and this is the pearl chrome finisher along the top now if we come in the merino leather is the top of the range leather that bmw do it's like a proper leather hide, um, natural, um, not machine finished or anything like that. And so basically it feels like a, a leather jacket to touch. It's very nice quality. All of the door shuts, as you can see, are very clean. Still got the blue plastic trim on the uh, plaques. They've not taken those off and we've kept it like that. Someone's gone to that much trouble to keep them on there. We'll leave it to the next owner and he can choose or, or she can choose whether they want to take those off. I can always do that for you. The electric seats with the electric lumbar, which inflates either side of the seat. The detailing on the Merino lever. I mean, this is all hand stitched. If you Google BMW individual and you'll see that this is all handcrafted and hand stitched with contrasting stitching and the piping that runs through there and up the sides and then around the headrests and this beautiful lever continues into the back of the car so let's just zoom in let's try and get let's try and see if I can God, I'd be no good in the film industry. I'm trying to work out how to get my... Okay, I can't get it onto the bit I want to, but uh, like I say, 
all of the plaited detail goes into the rear as well and the contrasting stitching. I'll just come down here. This is the bit I was talking about. Follows up around the back there. If we look down, we've got all the original mats in the car. It's all very clean. There are no rear doors, so it's very hard for me to get my arm around here to look, but this is all in lovely condition. If we look at the back of the seat, no damage on there. Let's get it back in focus. And you can move the seat with this button, pop that forward. Oh, sorry, pop that back. And then you can move the seat back and forward so this button is here. So really beautiful seats there. Now, have you spotted it? This is a manual car. So this car is very rare. There are very few manuals. And uh, usually I buy all the ZF gearboxes, but I figured a manual with this spec, there's not going to be anyone with one anywhere apart from here, because I've looked and I couldn't find any. So if you're looking for a manual, take a look, because this is lovely, this car. We'll show you more when we come around the other side. It's just like new inside. So we'll come around to the back. You can open up the boot with the key, it springs up. Start down here, so if we look along the back, no damage, no scratches. You can tell by the plastic as well, just the fact that there are no scratches. I mean, there's gonna be some tiny little mark, but there's no dig marks or anything. Let's try and get a better photo. Right, there we go. All the carpets, and we've got drop-down seats as well. So we've got these handles up at the top. Let's drop the seats down. We've got some storage space underneath. Just little things like that clips into there look, to hold itself up, and then you can just pull it, come down. Good size boot for a coupe. You've got um, golf clubs, they should fit across the back here. There's like a recess either side, you've got your locking wheel nut under there or you can put one of the seats down. And then up here, we have the triangle, all of the carpets are nice up here. And then we've got the reverse camera. You can just see every inch of the car is clean, even up here. Probably just worth showing you also, the exhaust and the bottom of the bumper down here. Everything's been polished. Rear parking sensors, so front and rear parking sensors. Let's take a look at just before we do, no scratches. No scratches around the door handle. No nasty chipping down the edge of the doors. The car's in lovely condition. Always remember with your coupes as well, not to pull and close the doors by holding the glass. Because if you look, there's no, you know, there's no structure around it. There's no door frame. So always use the door down here. Otherwise you'll loosen up the glass. Just show you the door shuts and all the badges. And again, you'll see the blue plastic protective slips are still over the, the covers still over the uh, M Sport uh, trim down there. Excuse me, I'm trying to think about too many things. Showing you the door rubber. And all the door rubber is good. Show you this because they can wear here or they can wear down here where people scuff their feet on. And uh, we've, we've just had a car come in, very similar mileage, and it's actually got a, like little splits there. So that's being replaced. It's just been ordered by Dan. It's 
So electric memory seat on the driver's side. And then all of the seat, as you can see, is pretty good to be honest with you. No argument with that, that's in nice condition. I mean, these are not brand new cars. I mean, this car is essentially, what is it? Three, four, getting on for nearly five years. Seats in lovely condition. This is the steering wheel. There's no scratches in the lever. You can see there, I'll check the other side in a minute. Now this car's also got driving assistant. So we've got anti-collision on here and um, uh, lane assist. Get confused with all these different names sometimes. Lane assist, yeah. So the steering wheel would vibrate if you go over the white line. Now this is where we've got the folding electric mirrors. Now I'm gonna start the car actually because we spent too long walking around it. Oh. It's a manual, so we need to get in and put the foot on the clutch. So the folding mirrors, you can fold these in using the key fob as well. Also, depending which side you've left the slider button for the left and right on the mirrors, that will dictate whether the near side mirror will dip automatically when you put it into reverse as well. So I'll just move the steering wheel on the way out. Just show you in there. There we go. Really lovely interior. You'll see BMW individual. Okay. So, 25,230 miles, it's showing on the speedo, all warranted mileage, of course. And uh, I'm gonna show you what these buttons here do. So the mode button here, ah, oh, I forgot we have the heads up display. So let's see, okay. I'm just gonna take you over to here first. Let's come out a little bit and get this back in focus. So with heads up display, focus, there we go. My vehicle, if we come down here into settings, go down to displays, heads up display. Right, so this is where it will show you what information you've chose to have displayed on the heads up display. You can also adjust the brightness the, oh, didn't, make, didn't mean to come out then, sorry, my fault. Didn't, uh, the height of the display and the rotation. So you can adjust the tilt from like, so forth like that. Now, if we come back up onto the top, let's try and zoom in. Okay, now if I press the mode button, now if you look at the grill on the front, the kidney grills on that white M240, you'll see I'm flicking through the dab channels You've got the speedo in the middle, so to the left of the dab channels, and a bit further to the left is like a speed, that's the speed limit, inform, speed, <laughs> speed information. That's what that is. <laughs> okay, I'll get there in the end. Now if we turn off the heads up display, the information then comes down inside the car. So when we press the mode button, we can flip through it down here and um, FM, so essentially all this will be, will be on the uh, heads up display. And if you've got your phone connected, it will show your last dialed numbers as well. I'm just gonna put the heads up display back on and leave it like that. So the professional media. So the professional media, I don't, 
This one isn't the touchscreen, which came out later. However, after speaking to some uh, BMW coding companies, you can actually upgrade these, um, if you wish, uh, the tiled ones, and you can have uh, Apple CarPlay connected, etc. Um, this one has got the Wi-Fi hotspot, I believe, as well, and it's got the Bluetooth, wi oh, sorry, the wireless charging, so that's all in there. So you can put your phone in there and it'll wirelessly charge. It's also got Wi-Fi hotspot. It's got an additional USB port down at the front here. So very simple to add Apple CarPlay to this car. Now, when we use the menu buttons down here, I'm pressing the same button, the menu button. By pressing it twice, you get a different display, and then you can go into the various different windows, go into the um, address destination, uh, it's going to input, and as most of you know, you can write with your finger, or you can talk into it, or you can just write on the top of the iDrive wheel here. Oh. Come out of there. Let's go back into menu. If we go to the media, we've got the DAB channels, FM music, Bluetooth audio, the sound, the Harman Kardon Logic 7 surround sound, we've got a graphic equalizer you can play around with as well. All very easy to use. Now if we come over here, connective drive, this is where you can pay a subscription and get Alexa and various different apps as well. There's a BMW app you can link to, you don't need to add that for the uh, BMW app. My vehicle, this is where we were a little while ago, you can go in, in fact, we go into the lighting, because I can almost guarantee this is gonna be on sport. There you go, they're always in sport. Let's put it in classic. So, in classic now, let's make sure the lights are on. And you'll notice up under here, there is lighting section here if I flip it to sport and notice it changes to white which you can hardly read uh, so hardly see hardly read and also the lighting up under the door cards as well if I flip that to sport you'll see that that changes and goes white but the classic shows up a lot better and it feels warmer in the winter the classic but the name Sport seems to get people's attention with this. iDrive settings, so we've done that. We can change all the units. For example, we'll change the power into horsepower, uh, the torque into pounds per foot. I'll show you um, why we've done that in a minute. Sound, we've done that. Notifications, pop-ups. So the pop-ups we want on. Oh. Otherwise that won't show the window I want to show. Right, we'll come out of there. We'll go into the vehicle status. This is where your tire pressures will show. Engine oil level you can check. Uh, control check on the car, there's no faults. Service requirements, so the brake fluid isn't due till next June. Oil, uh, the same, another 11,000 miles. Front brake pads. 8,000 miles, rear brake pads 42,000, oops, wrong button, sorry, let's go back over here, and if we go back up to the top, you'll see PDI service at 13 miles, oil and microfilter and emissions inspection, and then we had an engine oil, brake fluid, vehicle check, microfilter, air cleaner, spark plugs, so it had a big service, so the second service is the big service, and it had that along with everything else, so that's all been done. There every two, two years, the oil changes, or 19,000 miles. Brake fluid, the first one's three years, all of ones after that are two years. So that's all up to date. We've got the speed limiter on the top here. So you can adjust the speed at which you want to limit the car to. Or we've got the cruise control just below it. 
comes up on the top. Need to be driving along to set that. This is the mode button. Let's just get this in control. This is where I was adjusting the heads up display and dialing through. And this is where you get the telephone, etc. All of the books are in there. Come back up on here, go into my vehicle. You come down a bit further, owner's handbook. Everything in here is what's on the car. High beam assist, park disintroll, lane departure warning, dynamic stability control, etc. rear view camera. Now, if we go um, back into my vehicle, driving information, no, it's not that one. Vehicle technology in action, is that one? Sport display. I was just gonna see, actually, I can do it another way. So, here we go. So this is the lane departure warning. So this is where the steering wheel will vibrate if you go over the white line. Now, the other one we've got is collision warning, pedestrian alert as well. So it'll warn you during daylight, I believe it is, if a pedestrian's about to run out in front of you. You can change the warning point to early, medium or late, and you can see how cars move in the picture there I'll leave it back on medium so a lot of safety in the car as well let's come out of there right I think what we'll do next um, show you the rear view camera quickly so I've popped it into reverse and you can see we've got the parking sensors on the left and then on the right we've got the lines of the direction you're going to go and the um, warning boxes show you how close you're getting something. They start with green, they go yellow, and then they go red. So let's pop it out of there. Ah, oh, driving modes. So down here we have the driving modes. Let's come out of there. Eco Pro and Efficiency Dynamics. Very quickly, Eco Pro and Climate, 92%. If you change the speed that you can select and it'll warn you when you've gone over that speed, you'll see the 92% has now gone to 97%. Let's come back out. So if you put the speed up higher, where it was, you'll see it drops down to 92%. So you can configure all of this to show you how economically you're driving. This is where you'll get your best fuel economy. And then you've got comfort for a balanced setting of everything. So uh, throttle response, etc. Sport displays. Remember we just changed that into horsepower pounds per foot torque. So that's now in there. And then configure sport. I don't think this car's got the adaptive suspension it'll be in the advert if it has. I don't think it has. So it won't adjust the shock absorbers, but it will adjust the um, power delivery and the weight of the steering. Okay, so let's take you and show you under the bonnet. Those were the buttons for the driving, uh, driving assist. We've got sliding armrest, just remembered on this car as well. But I'll just grab my piece of paper. I'm going to leave the key there. Heads up, so I've worn this one. Speed limit information. Yeah. And the electric sunroof, of course, which we didn't open, but it does all open and tilts up as well. We come under the bonnet. This is our twin power turbo. So, being the petrol uh, engine, this has one turbo but it's got a twin scroll turbo, which means two inlets into the turbo. And essentially the cylinders are split into the two inlets and the pulsing of the um, air coming from the cylinders is sort of matched in a way where it gives better airflow. Sounds like a bit of a tongue twister, but if you Google twin scroll turbos and read up about it, you'll understand. They're much more efficient. 
much more responsive, less lag, um, just all round so many benefits to, a, to the twin scroll and that's what the BMWs use. All really nice and clean under here. I'm just trying to keep the focus because of the white. Now, I've noticed on there it's got BMW individual. That's because it's got the individual interior. These cars aren't done on the same conveyor belt sort of thing, because that interior is all hand finished. All lovely and clean under there. All cleaned by hand using WD-40 and very little in the way of a jet wash. We hoover all round in here after we've done it, or before sometimes, if, any, if there's many leaves. All lovely and clean up under here as well. So there you have it, really nice clean engine bay. 326 brake horsepower. Um, a Celtic remap will take this to 400 brake horsepower. Can't remember what the torque figures are, but easily found out on the internet or on our website or give me a call. So a stunning looking car, a rare car because it's the manual. And to get a manual with a really nice spec in lovely condition in the marketplace that we're in at the moment, it's quite a tall order. Because as you know, there's not many cars around. We've got lots of finance packages, some great warranties to put on the cars. So if there's anything you need to know, please give me a call. I'll be happy to help. So thanks for taking the time to watch. I know it's a long video, but it's meant to be there to help you. You can always scan through these quickly, these videos, if you want to see a certain area of the car. Just want to show you around it last a little bit. I'll just take you around to the rear. Sometimes the rear of the car is one of the nicest parts of Let's see if we can get down. Got those lovely twin pipes and of course the, the near side pipe down here has got a valve on it. So when you put it into sport mode or rev it above 3,000 revs, it opens up. That's saying that, if we put it into sport now, don't know why we didn't do this earlier. Let's give it a little blip. Fantastic. So thank you very much for watching the video. Look forward to speaking to you soon. Take care. Bye.